Welcome to the Locus Awards. I'm Liza Trombi. I'm the editor in chief of Locus Magazine, and I'm so pleased that we made it after this wild roller coaster we've all been on, and after we ditched our physical event, tried to figure out what we could do, if anything, and then shifted as many things as we could online. Here we are to celebrate the works of 2019 in science fiction, fantasy, horror, young adult, art, nonfiction. <laughs> Um, publishers, editors, artists, everyone who contributed to the field. Our MC today is Connie Willis. She'll be presenting the awards with co-host Daryl Gregory. Uh, Connie Willis, who probably doesn't really need an introduction, but I'm going to do it anyway. Connie Willis is one of the most celebrated authors alive, having perhaps won more major awards than anyone alive or not. She has 11 Hugos, seven Nebula Awards, not to mention a dozen Locus Awards she's picked up along the way. When they made her a CIFA Grandmaster in 2011, no one was surprised. We're like, yeah, it's about time. Since she started publishing in the 70s, she's produced over 20 books, scores of short fiction, and she's one of those rare authors who excels equally in both short and long forms. She reinvented the time tra travel genre with her sprawling series about Oxford historians who use unpredictable technologies to go back into the past most recently in Hugo and Nebula award-winning duology, Blackout and All Clear. She has a taste for screwball comedy and rapid fire dialogue, uh, which was shown off to good effect in her recent book, Crosstalk. And she's a modern day Dickens, having written so many Christmas stories, she has two collections devoted to them. She also gives back to the community. She teaches workshops. She's taught at Clarion West. She's taught at the Locus Awards weekend. And as if that's not enough to be so accomplished, she's also funny and fascinating in person, on stage, and today on your screen. Please welcome Connie Willis. Hi, everybody. I'm Connie Willis, and I'd like to welcome you to the very first and hopefully, hopefully the last virtual because there's a stupid pandemic award ceremony. I can't believe we're having a pandemic. I mean, one year right before the Locust Awards, I broke my eye. And then the next year I was bitten by a rabid bat and then my knee exploded. And now we've got a worldwide outbreak of the Andromeda strain or something. I would say what's coming next, but um, I'm kind of afraid of the answer. So, and anyway, if rabid bats and shattered eye sockets and collapsing knees can't stop the Locust Award, then neither can a little out of control, currently spiking, possibly mutating, definitely deadly disease. As the US Postal Service says, Neither rain, nor snow, nor sleet, nor gloom of COVID-19 can stay us from our appointed rounds. Although, come to think of it, the post office isn't doing too well either. It may go bankrupt for, by July, so people, please buy stamps. Buy stamps. Lots of stamps. Okay. Now, what was I saying? Oh, yes. Nothing, neither tornadoes, nor tsunamis, nor triffids, nor truckloads of tribbles can keep us from having our annual Locus Award celebration. So here we go. I am sorry that there's not a banquet this year and that I can't see your smiling faces, um, but maybe that's just as well. Uh, you're in your pajamas, aren't you? Yeah, I thought so. And you tried to cut your own hair, didn't you? Mm -hmm. And some of you have gone from what's the point of shaving and or wearing makeup to what's the point of wiping the Cheeto dust and chocolate smears off my face to what's the point of anything, really? I am right there with you. Although there have been some good things about the pandemic. I mean, one, you have an ironclad reason for not going to events that you hate and visiting people that you loathe. Two, you can finally watch all those episodes of Say Yes to the Dress, my favorite show, and 90 Day Fiance. Uh, three, you finally have time to learn Elvish. And if you're a hoarder, no one is ever again going to do an intervention to try to get you to get rid of stuff. I mean, you are never going to catch me again without a year's supply of toilet paper, sanitizing wipes, Tylenol, isopropyl alcohol, iodized salt, yeast, and chocolate cherries. In past years at the Locust Awards, at this point we would have a book raffle. Sorry, we can't do that either. And then I would catch you up on any news that you might have missed over the year. But there's no point in doing that this year because, one, you already know what's going on because you've been stuck at home with nothing to do but watch CNN for the past four months. And, two, the news is all bad. The only good news I could find was... Um, one, 
my daughter has a new kitten that's really, really cute. And two, in three days, 2020 will be half over. So moving on. In past years, we have always had a Hawaiian shirt contest in honor of Locus's founder, Charles N. Brown, who always wore Hawaiian shirts, including to the Locus Banquet. This year, we considered having a pandemic outfit contest, but honestly, we were afraid of what you might show up in, so we decided to cancel that too. But we are having the trivia contest. After we uh, picked the best Hawaiian shirts, the winners got to participate in a contest with questions about Locust Magazine and science fiction and Hawaiian shirts and spam and anything else that occurred to us. Uh, we can't have the Hawaiian shirt contest, so this year everybody is going to participate in the trivia contest. And um, I'm sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. I always, uh, also at the at this event, I always lose track of my pages at some point, and this is the point at which I've lost track of my pages. Okay, um, uh, this year everybody is going to participate, so get out your sanitized paper and pencil or your old eyeliner pencils and lipsticks since you're not wearing makeup anymore, and get ready to answer some questions on, you guessed it, the pandemic. Oh, um, wait, uh, in past years, we had awarded a banana that was signed by all the writers at the banquet to the first place winner. Unfortunately, we couldn't get to the store to buy the bananas. I have just, well, yes, we have no bananas. I have one banana. Um, and we had no way to get the banana signed and sent off to everybody except by mail, uh, which didn't seem like a good idea, bananas having kind of a short shelf life. And anyway, the post office is kind of in bad financial shape. So buy stamps, everybody stamps. They have really good stamps. These are American Garden stamps, and then they have um, Harlem Renaissance stamps, Maine stamps, and they had some um, uh, Tyrannosaurus stamps, but I used those all up. Okay. Um, so if you do win the contest, you have to make your own banana. It's easy, just take a banana, banana, and a magic marker, and then write Jules Verne and H.G. Wells and Isaac Asimov on it. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Everybody ready for our contest? All right, here we go. <clears throat> Number one, the worst thing about the pandemic is A, Zoom. B, Instagram toilet bowl licking challenges. C, murder hornets. D, March has lasted 8,285 days so far with no end in sight. Number two, instead of being cooped up in my home or apartment, I wish I could spend the pandemic A, on the Titanic, B, in the late Cretaceous. Oh, and I just realized I have not mentioned Primeval, my favorite television show. Uh, which I always do at the Locust Awards, Pterodactyls, Tyrannosaurus Rexes, Spinosauruses, and Andrew Lee Potts. Uh, the pandemic is a perfect time to watch all five seasons. <clears throat> uh, and it's just, oh, it's great. It's just, it's even better than Say Yes to the Dress. Okay, so um, where was I? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Instead of being cooped up in my home or apartment, I wish I could spend the pandemic, A, on the Titanic, B, in the late Cretaceous, C, on the Hindenburg, D, on Alderaan. Okay, ready? Number three, the thing I've missed most during the pandemic is A, toilet paper, B, getting tattooed, C, worrying about the Australian wildfires, D, worrying about lava flows, E, not being able to use the excuse, if I only had some time at home, I could finish my novel anymore. Four, if the pandemic were a beverage, it would be A, kale Kool-Aid, B, an arugula and persimmon smoothie, C, strawberry flavored quick, D, colonoscopy prep. <clears throat> okay, and the final question, what will, what catastrophe will befall the Locust Awards next year? A, bigger murder hornets, B, murder pigeons. C, killer rabbits, D, the kraken, or E, the zombie apocalypse. Okay, you got your answers? Okay, ready? The correct answers were G, L, P, N, and 42. 
and you are all winners. Yay, go eat your bananas. <clears throat> of course, what you're really here for is to announce the winners of this year's Locust Awards. Well, that's what we're really here for, what, we're all, what we all came for, and to celebrate the winners, and we're going to do that right now. It is my pleasure to introduce my cohort in crime, Daryl Gregory, to introduce our first batch of awards. Daryl? Daryl. Oh. Hey! Hi, Connie. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, you, uh, you were right about the banana thing, Connie. It, it's, it's delicious and it, it adds potassium. Um, I am uh, so honored to be presenting this with you, Connie, and uh, to be talking to you folks out there uh, because I, I literally have nothing else to do. Uh, this is it for the month. So, um, uh, Connie's up in Colorado. Uh, I'm talking to you from California. We're still sort of in lockdown. Uh, so there's, you know, we're not supposed to be going outside or seeing friends or relatives or going to parties. So, you know, as an introvert, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty great. It's uh, sweet. Um, so, uh, but I did realize that, that uh, being in a pandemic made me think about like the Middle Ages and how the people, how did they cope in the Black Plague? And until, until all this happened, I didn't realize uh, how much weight they gained or how heavily they were drinking. Um, I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was different then. Uh, let's just get started, right? Uh, let's let's go on. Let's get started with the with the awards. Uh, the Locus Awards are voted on, uh, voted on by not only readers of Locus uh, but by the public. Uh, you may remember the public uh, were people who were sometimes found outside uh, in public, which is how they got that name. You you just learned something. So uh, our first category is Best Illustrated and Art Book. Our nominees are The Illustrated World of Token by David Day, Julie Dillon, Daydreamer's Journey, Ed Emschwiller, Dream Dance, The Art of Ed Emschwiller, Jesse Pires, Editor. Spectrum 26, The Best in Contemporary and Fanta <coughs> Contemporary Fantastic... <coughs> That's our dog. Uh, he's kind of a critic. The best in contemporary fantastic art, John Flesky's editor. Donata Giancola, Middle Earth, Journeys in Myth and Legend. Raya Golden, Starport, George R. R. Martin. Fantasy World Building, A Guide to Developing Mythic Worlds and Legendary Creatures by Mark A. Nelson. And Tran Gwen, Ambido, Tran Gwen, uh, Yukio, Yuko Shimizu, The Fairy Tales of Oscar Wilde by Oscar Wilde. And Bill Sienkiewicz, The Island of Dr. Moreau by H.G. Wells. And the winner is Spectrum 26, The Best in Contemporary Fantastic Art, John Flesky's Editor. Congratulations, John. And the publisher is? Flesk. Best nonfiction. Um, this is the only category defined by what it's not. So, like people ask, "What do you write? Is it fiction?" It's like, no. Uh, poetry, no. no. Plays, no. Guess, guess again. Uh, you refuse to be pinned down, and I really admire that about nonfiction writers. Um, the nominees are. Lost Transmissions, The Secret History of Science Fiction and Fantasy, Desirina Boscovich, Editor. The Time Machine Hypothesis, Extreme Science Meets Science Fiction, Damian Broderick. Reading Backwards, Essays and Reviews, 2005 to 2018, John Crowley. Joanna Rusk, by Gwyneth Jones. Monster, She Wrote. The Women Who Pioneered Horror and Speculative Fiction by Lisa Kroger and Melanie R. Anderson. Kim Stanley Robinson by Robert Markley. The Pleasant Profession of Robert A. Heinlein 
by Farah Mendelssohn. Broken places and outer spaces, finding creativity in the unexpected by Nnedi Okorafor. The Lady from the Black Lagoon, Hollywood Monsters and the Lost Legacy of Millicent Patrick by Melanie O'Meara. And H.G. Wells, A Literary Life by Adam Roberts. And the winner is Monster She Wrote, The Women Who Pioneered Horror and Speculative Fiction by Lisa Kroger and Melanie R. Anderson, uh, the publisher's Quirk. Congratulations, Lisa and Melanie. Um, the next category is Best Artist, or as I like to call it, Best Non-Word Makers. The nominees are Kanoko uh, Y. Craft, Galen Dara, Julie Dillon, Bob Eggleton, Donato Giancola, Kathleen Jennings, John Picasso, Sean Ten, Ten Charles Vess, and Michael Whelan. And the winner is John Picasso. John, congratulations. The next category is Best Editor. Um, now, I've worked with uh, most of these people, um, and editors give you valuable feedback, like, uh, Daryl, make it shorter. Uh, make it punchier, Daryl. Or, Daryl, stop making your autobiographical protagonist such an asshole. And so, I would like to take this opportunity to give some feedback uh, to these editors. Uh, just some editorial notes. Uh, you can step them, of course, but I, I want you to listen. Uh, I think it'll, it'll be helpful. Um, let's let's start with John Joseph Adams. John, uh, too many first names. I mean, the last one is really close, but I just think you need to go to something shorter, punchier, uh, maybe some sort of acronym or maybe initials. I don't know what people would call you, uh, but I sh you should think about it. Uh, Neil Clark. Great science fiction name. Uh, Neil Armstrong, Arthur C. Clarke. But it almost strikes me as a little too needy, like you just want to prove it. Um, so uh, what I would do is just uh, drop the E at the end um, and just go with Clark. I mean, people will, people will get it. Uh, just trust in, trust in your readers. Uh, Ellen Datlow. Um, I'm not going to offer any suggestions for Ellen's name. Uh, not because her name couldn't be improved, but because uh, I'm afraid of Ellen Dantlow. Uh, have, you, have you seen her apartment? It's, it's full of doll heads. So, Ellen, uh, it's great. I think you're doing a great job. Uh, Gardner de Zwa. Too late, man. Uh, you should have called me. I, what were you thinking? C.C. Uh, Finley. Um, I think this is a confusing name. When I send you an email, it's like, uh, send email C.C. Finley. Uh, I, I think you should really go back to your, your original name, uh, Carbon Copy Finley. <laughs> uh, Jonathan Strawn. I, I, I've struggled with your name for years, man. Uh, we're pals, but it, 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 every time I see your name, I think Strahan. Strahan. So... I really think, to just clarify things for your audience, uh, just change your name to Jonathan Strawn. <laughs> it will make everyone else happier. I'm just taking it, take it as a note. Um, Lynn M. Thomas and Michael Damian Thomas. It's too many first names. I, I don't know. You guys are really pushing it. Um, I think you got to reconsider. I mean, there's so many names. Um, I would just go with a glyph of some kind. Um, I th trust me, I think it'll be catchy. Uh, Anne and Jeff Vandermeer, better, uh, less names, but still kind of redundant. It, it doesn't really punch. Um, if I were you, I would just go with Vandermeer with the exclamation mark. Um, and if, you, if that's too long, it's a little long. I mean, the capital M in the middle is still kind of, uh, you know, I don't know what's going on there. Um, I would just go with Jeb. Uh, Sheila Williams, classic kind of literary name. Uh, I think it works pretty well, but it's, 
here's the problem. It's just Chila. It's not science fictional. Um, so I'm thinking you should uh, uh, go with the Elon Musk child's name. Uh, I think it worked for you. Uh, Novel Wolf. Okay, another great science fiction name. You've got Gary Wolf. You've got Gene Wolf. Uh, and also, you've, uh, you've just had a baby. Uh, congratulations, another child. Um, so from now on, we're just going to call you Wolfpack. <laughs> okay, I think I, uh, I apologize. Uh, I would like to have my career back later, if I could. Um, the winner. Oh, yeah, I should, uh, I should actually find the... Uh... The winner of Best Editor goes to... Ellen Dantlow. Congratulations, Ellen, and keep your name. Okay, back to you, Connie. Thank you, Daryl. Okay, uh, our next Locus Award is for Best Publisher, and the nominees are Angry Robot, Daw, Galance, Harper Voyager, Orbit, Saga, Small Beer, Subterranean, Tachyon, and Tor. And the winner is Tor. Our next award is for Best Magazine, and the nominees are Analog. Asimov's, Beneath Ceaseless Skies, Clark's World, FNSF, File 770, Lightspeed, Strange Horizons, Tor.com, and Uncanny. And the winner is Tor.com. Our next Locus Award is for Best Collection, and the nominees are Exhalation by Ted Chang, Of Wars and Memories and Starlight by Aliette de Bodard, The Best of Greg Egan by Greg Egan, Snow White, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> Snow White Learns Witchcraft by Theodora Goss, Full Throttle by Joe Hill, Meet Me in the Future by Cameron Hurley, The Very Best of Caitlin R. Kiernan by Caitlin R. Kiernan, The Best of R.A. Lafferty by R.A. Lafferty, Hexarchati Hexar Stories by Yoon Ha Lee, and Sooner or Later Everything Falls into the Sea by Sarah Pinsker. Okay, and the winner is Exhalation by Ted Chang, publisher Knopf and Reader. Oh, sorry, publisher Knopf and Picador. The next award is for Best Anthology, and the nominees are Echoes, the Saga Anthology of Ghost Stories, Ellen Datlow, editor. The Very Best of the Best, 35 Years of the Year's Best Science Fiction, Gardner Dozois, Editor. A People's Future of the United States, Victor Laval and John Joseph Ad Adams, Editors. Broken Stars, Contemporary Chinese Science Fiction in Translation, Ken Liu, Editor. The Mythic Dream, Dominic Parisienne and Nava Wolf, Editors. New Sons, Original Speculative Fiction by People of Color, Nisi Shaw, Editor. The Best Science Fiction and Fantasy of the Year, Volume 13, Jonathan Strawn, Editor. Mission Critical, Jonathan Strawn, Editor. The Best of Uncanny, Lynn M. Thompson and Michael Damian Thomas, Editors. And The Big Book of Classic Fantasy. Anne Vandermeer and Jeff Vandermeer, editors. And the winner is New Sons, original speculative fiction by people of color, Nisi Shaw, editor. Published by Solaris U.S., 
and Solaris UK. And now I'd like to introduce Liza Trombi, who will present a special award. Liza? Thanks, Connie. We're halfway through the award ceremony. I just want to take a moment to thank everyone, especially you, for watching today and for voting in the Locus Awards. We're very excited about presenting the results of your votes. Also, I want to introduce the rest of the band. Uh, Connie's co-host today is author Daryl Gregory, who has six novels. Most recently out was Spoonbenders, which was a finalist for the Nebula, Locus, and World Fantasy Awards. His novella, We Are All Completely Fine, won the Shirley Jackson and World Fantasy Award, and he also writes short fiction, he's done comic and game writing, he teaches workshops, and he's a pretty funny guy, so we let him stick around. Also behind, behind the scenes today are the whole Locus team who've been working extra hard to let me break away from making the magazine to put all of this together. Um, so thank you everyone for working so hard and supporting this. Our design editor, Francesca Maiman, has been working at my virtual side right about here. And uh, she makes all of our graphics and she helps with website stuff and does logistics and she's kind of amazing. Our um, tech guru is Laurel Amberdeen, who's been keeping the back end of all of this online stuff going. And our associate editor, Arlie Sorg, has been our man on the ground um, at the Locus offices. And he will also be presenting this year's special award. Um, there's also a new intern who snuck into our office just in time with some video skills to help us do all the video editing named Ian, Ian Deek. Thank you so much, Ian. Um, and also thank you to Loser Ace who helped us with animating our graphics. Um, the Locus Special Award, which is coming up next, is something we decided to start doing a few years ago. We have all of these awards that everyone votes on about the work done in the last year, but we really wanted to give an award to people who've put in extra time and energy toward making the science fiction, fantasy, and horror community a better place to work in and to enjoy. Um, people who've done community development and outreach, who have started organizations, started funds to help uh, writers in need, and um, to present this year's special award, here's Locus Associate Editor, Arlie Sorg. Hi, I'm Arlie Sorg. I work at Locus. In 2005, Aqueduct Press published a slender paperback by Nisi Shaw and Cynthia Ward called Writing the Other, A Practical Approach. In response to the idea that it is a mistake to write about people of ethnic backgrounds different from your own, because you might get it wrong. Horribly, offensively wrong. And so it is better not even to try. Oh, you can do it, Shaw and Ward said but you better do it right. Moreover, here's a book which can help. What you might not know is that Nisi and Cynthia had been running workshops for years before that book came out, and the book drew heavily on their experiences. Later, the internet became a thing, and a more formalized online workshop began, with K. Tempest Bradford added to the core roster in 2014. Now, Writing the Other offers an assortment of classes, master classes, seminars, retreats, and even a scholarship, not to mention continuing their work at conventions on panels and more. They bring in guest instructors, such as Stephen Barnes, Piper J. Drake, Kate Elliott, Max Gladstone, and J.Y. Neon Yang, and they have helped ways of authors, both new and experienced, to craft their stories in more respectful and conscientious ways. This year's Locus Special Award is for Inclusivity and Representation at Education. It goes to Writing the Other. Organized by Nisi Shaw, Cynthia Ward, and K. Tempest Bradford. Three authors who recognized a tremendous need in speculative fiction community and took action to help create positive change. Congratulations to Writing the Other. Thank you very much. Uh, now on to uh, the category that goes to uh, 
a really good story that is not long. Best short story. The nominees are The Bookstore at the End of America by Charlie Jane Anders, Lest We Forget by Elizabeth Baer, The Galactic Tourist Industrial Complex, Tobias S. Bokel. It's 2059 and the rich kids are still winning, Ted Chang. Fisher Bird by T. Kingfisher. I, 28M, created a deep fake girlfriend and now my parents think we're getting married. Fonda Lee. The Girl Who Did Not Know Fear by Kelly Link. Thoughts and Prayers by Ken Liu. A Brief Lesson in Native American Astronomy by Rebecca Roanhorse. A Catalog of Storms by Fran Wilde. And the winner is The Bookstore at the End of America by Charlie Jane Anders, which appeared in A People's Future of the United States. Congratulations, Charlotte Jane. And now the category uh, named after that famous 1960s girl group, the Novelettes. The nominees are A Race, A Race, A Race by Elizabeth Baer. For He Can Creep by Siobhan Carroll. Omphalos by Ted Chang. A Country Called Winter by Theodora Goss. Late Returns by Joe Hill. Emergency Skin by N.K. Jemison. The Justified by Anne Leckie. Phantoms of the Midway by Shawna McGuire. Binti Sacred Fire by Nettie Okorafor. And The Blur in the Corner of Your Eye by Sarah Pinsker. And the winner is Omphalos by Ted Chang. Congratulations, Ted. And now on to best novella. Uh, novella is a, is a made-up word, uh, like all words. <laughs> The nominees are A Time to Reap by Elizabeth Baer, To Be Taught If Fortunate by Becky Chambers, Anxiety is the Dizziness of Freedom by Ted Chang, The Haunting of Tramcar 015 by P. Jelly Clark, Desdemona and the Deep by C.S.E. Cooney, this is How You Lose the Time War by Amal al Matar and Max Gladstone. The Gurkha and the Lord of Tuesday by Sayad Z. Hossein. Permafrost by Alistair Reynolds. And The Deep by River Solomon with David Diggs, William Hudson, and Jonathan Snipes. And The Ascent to Godhood by J.Y. Yang. And the winner is This Is How You Lose the Time War by Amel al Matar and Max Gladstone, Saga Publishing. Congratulations, Amel and Max! Our final category, for me anyways, before I hand this back to Connie, is uh, Best First Novel. I, I love this category because uh, every novelist gets this award. Uh, whatever your first novel is, that's your best first novel. Uh, you have to live with it. So uh, these people, uh, fortunately, wrote really good first novels. Uh, the nominees are The Water Dancer by Ta-Nehisi Coates, Magic for Liars by Sarah Gailey, The Ten Thousand Doors of January by Alex E. Harrow, A Memory Called Empire by Arkady Martin. Infinite Detail by Tim Maughan. Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. Finder by Suzanne Palmer. A Song for a New Day by Sarah Pinsker. Waste Tide by Chen Kuo Fan. The Luminous Dead by Caitlin Starling. 
And the winner is Gideon the Ninth by Tamson Muir, Tour.com Publishing. Congratulations, Samson. Okay, Connie, back to you. Thank you, Daryl. Our next Locus Award is for Best Young Adult Novel, and the nominees are King of Scars by Lee Bardugo, The Wicked King by Holly Black, Pet by Akweki Umazai, Catfishing on Catnet by Naomi Kritzer, Dragon Pearl by Yoon Ha Lee, Destroy All Monsters by Sam J. Miller, Angel Mage by Garth Nix, War Girls by Tachi Onobuchi, The Book of Dust, The Secret Commonwealth by Philip Pullman, and Shadow Captain by Alistair Reynolds. And the winner is Dragon Pearl by Yoon Ha Lee, published by Disney Hyperion. <laughs> And the next Locus Award is the Best Horror Novel. And the nominees are Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chbosky, Prisoner of Midnight by Barbara Hambly, Curious Toys by Elizabeth Hand, Black Leopard, Red Wolf by Marlon James, The Grand Dark by Richard Cadry, The Institute by Stephen King, The Twisted Ones by T. Kingfisher, Anno Dracula 1999, Daikaiju by Kim Newman, The Pursuit of William Abbey by Claire North, and The Toll by Sherry Priest. And the winner is Black Leopard, Red Wolf by Marlon James, published by Riverhead, Hamish Hamilton. The next Locus Award is for Best Fantasy Novel, and the nominees are Ninth House by Lee Bardugo, A Brightness Long Ago by Guy Gabriel Kay, <clears throat> The Raven Tower by Anne Leckie, Jade War by Fonda Lee, Middle Game by Shauna McGuire, Gods of Jade and Shadow by Sylvia Moreno-Garcia, the Starless Sea by Aaron Morgenstern, The Storm of Locusts by Rebecca Roanhorse, the, Dragon, I, the Iron Dragon's Mother by Michael Swanwick, and Dead Astronauts by Jeff Vandermeer. And the winner is Middle Game by Shauna McGuire, published by Tor.com Publishing. And our final award is for our best science fiction novel. And the nominees are The City in the Middle of the Night by Charlie Jane Anders, The Testaments by Char uh, Margaret Atwood, Ancestral Night by Elizabeth Baer, Empress of Forever by Max Gladstone, The Light Brigade by Cameron Hurley, Luna Moon Rising by Ian MacDonald, The Future of Another Timeline by Annalee Newitz, Fleet of Knives by Gareth L. Powell, The Rosewater Insurrection and the Rosewater Redemption by Tade Thompson, Wanderers by Chuck Wendig. And the winner is The City in the Middle of the Night by Charlie Jane Anders, published by Tor and Titan. <laughs> Congratulations to all you winners. I want to thank everybody who made the Locus Awards this, this year possible, all the panelists and guests and participants and film editors and MCs. Thank you, Daryl, and especially Liza Trombi, who put this year's award events together, and Charles N. Brown, who started the whole thing. And thanks to all of you for coming. Bye. See you next year in Seattle.